This morning when I got in, I walked around the coffee room and I asked people, why are you here for heaven's sakes? Why are you coming and not going to do your Christmas shopping early? Why would you sit in a dark room and listen to some weird guy at a podium as if we were gurus? And nobody really gave me a straight answer, but at a certain point, someone said, well, I think I am here to get a little profit from it, to improve myself. Maybe you have the silver bullet in my life. I thought that's pretty good. The, um, we all wake up in the morning because we have certain dreams certain ideals, certain hopes, but we don't know exactly what it is. We are all looking for a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But we can go to university and take a master's course or a PhD and how will I get my ultimate happiness? It's searching and searching and searching, step by step by step, and it's not easy. It's very difficult. Now, in order to get there, you need to have a certain freedom. And Timmermans already told you, and the mayor told you, we live in an environment of liberty and freedom. And I was asked by the organization to explain that a little bit, how that came about, how Amsterdam has that uniqueness that allows you to sit here, because it's not normal that you can talk about technology and entertainment and what else was it, design, I think it is, in total freedom. That doesn't come overnight. So let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to a little guy called Gerrit Gerritsson. He was the illeg illegitimate child of a priest and his housekeeper. And I guess I had a little roll in the hay, and then, you know, you know how things develop, and that's what happened. And here was this little guy who came from Gouda, and he was a shame of the family, of course. Uh, so he fled from Gouda, and he went to Rotterdam. Rotterdam was, is also a city in the Netherlands, not too far from here. And he was a very good marketing fellow. He changed his name, and he adopted the name of uh, the saint of the shipping people. He became Mr. Erasmus, Erasmus Rotterdamus. And he wrote a wonderful little piece about the hypocrisy of the people he was surrounded with ever since he was born, in praise of folly. Now, of course, the time frame is far too short to tell you all about Impreso Folly. But to put it in perspective, he was doing a little bit what Theo van Gogh did just a few years ago. Theo van Gogh was here in Amsterdam, and he made his Impreso of Folly about dogmatic thinking, lack of freedom, lack of liberty, because, again, and the minister already told you, there are minorities out there who want to take away from you that enormous freedom. Theo had to pay for it with his life, and Erasmus had to pay for it with his freedom. And then, it didn't stop. It went on. You can't stop it. Once it's out of the box, it'll continue. It's wonderful. And I'll jump a hundred years, and suddenly we are in the middle of the 17th century, like the mayor already showed you, and here is an alochton. Here is an immigrant from Portugal. His name was, at that time, Gabriel da Costa. Gabriel da Costa could not be a Jew in Portugal, because everybody had to be a Christian. So he came to Amsterdam and converted to Judaism, and he did his bar mitzvah. And when he did his bar mitzvah, he studied and he wrote his thesis. And his thesis was, oh my God, he started, started to study here at the synagogue, and he found out something that was awfully shocking, incredibly shocking. He found out that in Judaism, life after death was a new concept. It was a concept that was brought in by the Greek, by Alexander the Great, and it was a concept adopted by the Pharisees. 
And he wrote his thesis and he said, I have in this great city of Amsterdam the freedom to tell you that we Jews never believed in life after death. That was a shock. That was a great shock. So the congregation condemned him to death. And the city of Amsterdam condemned him to death. And he had to flee or recount. He didn't recount. And then he was trampled. He was trampled on the floor of the synagogue. Every bone in his body was broken. And he committed suicide. And then 10 years later was this other great guy from Portugal, Spinoza. And he also had a very wild idea. The mayor already told you that. He said, God, we have this concept of God. But I have the freedom to think that since we're all children of God, we are God. I am God. And to say it in the words of a Dutch poet, Ik ben God tot in het diepst van mijn gedachten. Close, 1880. I'm God down to the deepest of my soul. And that was Spinoza, also a very revolutionary idea. And he had to flee, and he went to Leiden, and again, he was condemned to death. And even today, we're trying to get the ban lifted from the Vatican because he is condemned for eternity. See, and he created freedom for you. And then there was another guy. One more jump, 50 years later. Here is a guy who calls himself Mendeville. Or if you want to, Mandevil. Bernard Mandevil from Rotterdam said, hey, you always talked about vice. You know, vice can be virtue. Vanity, greed, isn't that the motive, the great motor of our economy? Would there be a cosmetics industry? Would there be a fashion industry without vanity? If you do not desire the car of your neighbor, we consider that a vice, right? Would you buy a car? Would you buy a nicer car than your neighbor? You need to be envious. So here was Mandeville who created for you greed and all the other vices that became the motor of our consumer society. And I've only mentioned these four philosophers to give you a little bit of an idea that you're sitting here in freedom. You're sitting here to pursue happiness, as the American Constitution reads. And it didn't come overnight. It came over a period of 400, 500 years, and we're still fighting every day to keep it, to keep that freedom so you can search and go out and do it. So now you're looking for a guru to tell you how to reach your own pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And I tell you, you won't find it. There's not a single religious leader who can tell you how to get there. And as a matter of fact, didn't God die in the 60s? Didn't he lose his power? Didn't the churches fall apart as your ethical and philosophical leader? And then we had, of course, the politicians. We had the age of socialism, and we all loved it. And I remember oh, marching here in Amsterdam, you know, we had all these wonderful things, and Vietnam, and all these great things. And then, didn't socialism fall apart? Wasn't it 89, I think, when the wall in Berlin collapsed and it was gone, the fantasy up, up in smoke suddenly? And then, of course, there was capitalism, and now we were going to be rich, and we were going to be individuals and do it. And didn't that collapse last year? See? <laughs> so here, all these gurus, my friends, are not going to do it. Not for you and not for me. And anybody, me, and anybody else on this stage is not going to do it for you. The only person who can do it for you is you, and nobody else. The pot of gold that you can reach is in you. That is the great mystery of life.
And the only person who is standing in your way is you. You create your own demons. You create your own fear. The minister just told you. And believe me, in every form and fashion, now it's Christmas time almost. So we say that the, the leprechauns, right? The story, the fairy tale, the leprechauns, they are holding you away from the pot of gold. And they're slimy little devils. Well, you better go out and catch your leprechaun. And then you strangle him. And then you get going. Get out of the box. And once you unify with your own self, with your pot of gold, you have this fantastic power. Suddenly, you're there. Suddenly, you have capital. Capital is not in the bank. You've seen it evaporate a year ago, didn't it? Capital is in you, your creative powers, your ability to make something out of nothing. That's what you do, and that's why you're here. You, you want to be empowered, empowered by us speakers to have permission to go do it. And I ask you to go do it. Don't hesitate. Don't have fear. And if you have fear, fight. And don't be afraid of the fight because it is in this great dualism, this great dualism that we have in the parliament with opposition and a ruling party, and it's in the yes and in the no and in the black and in the white and in the struggle, the endless struggle, that forms the edges of the path. That tells you where to go and where to stop and where to step. And of course you'll triple. And of course you'll fall off and you, you, know, you make a little mistake here and there. But you get up again and you go, 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 go. Don't get discouraged. Don't come with excuses. Don't tell me I can't get money from the bank and I can't get my little business going. Because it starts with you. If you have a great idea, if you allow yourself, if you allow yourself to be empowered and go to that idea and maximize it, the sky is the limit. Then it's all in your hands. And believe me, I'm an old man and I have done the journey. And I look back, that was a great journey. You are by far in the history of mankind, the most successful species. Never before in world history have we had people as well educated, as many in the world, as well fat, as many opportunities. And you have this enormous portfolio at your fingertips. So my friends, I am extremely optimistic about this fantastic generation and about this fantastic future. I'm so thrilled that I am allowed to even witness the start of it. You will become far greater than any of us before, than any of the golden age because you are living in the age of diamonds. A wonderful, wonderful journey. So even before my time is up, I wish you a great journey.